Which brings us to probably my favorite part of this chapter, which is Hess's Law. This is where delta H being a state function helps us a lot. For example, we have a reaction, carbon solid plus half an O2, yes, in thermo, we can use fractions when we balance. It's because we want to leave one mole of carbon here. Goes to carbon monoxide gas. And we want to know what the delta H for this reaction is. Thing is, it's hard to do that reaction. When you burn carbon in oxygen, you get usually a mixture of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. We want to know just that. So we can take advantage of the fact that enthalpy is a state function. We can do carbon solid plus oxygen gas goes to CO2 gas. Let's say we could measure the delta H for that reaction as negative 393.5 kilojoules. And let's say we had another reaction where carbon monoxide gas reacts with some more oxygen to give us carbon dioxide gas. And we measure the delta H for that as being negative 283.0 kilojoules. Now, because delta H is a state function, we can combine these two reactions to give us this reaction. And whatever we do, as long as we do it to the delta H's, then we can combine the delta H's and we can find this delta H for this reaction that we haven't directly measured. That's where the state function thing comes in. This is just like doing simultaneous equations in math class. So for example, so I look at this and I know I'm going to want CO on the product side because that's what I'm looking at. I want CO on the product side. I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to reverse it. And the delta H for that is identical to the delta H I had before except the change in sign. So that is now going to be positive 283 kilojoules. Okay? That's good. I got my CO on the product side, which is where I want it to be. Remember, this guy is out of the picture now. I rewrote it. This CO2, I'm going to cancel with this CO2. This half an O2 is going to cancel with this or half of this O2 and leave me with a half an O2. Now I've got carbon plus half an O2 goes to CO. I can add those right up just like I would do simultaneous equations in math class. Carbon plus half an O2 goes to CO. And then I add up these guys. My delta H is the same way I would do that. Negative 393.5 plus positive 283 gives me a delta H for this reaction of negative 110.5 kilojoules. Now sometimes I have to do other things besides reverse them. Sometimes I could multiply the reaction by two or multiply the reaction by a half. Whatever I do to the reaction, it's fine as long as I do it to the whole reaction and I also do it to delta H. Now a very special kind of delta H is called the heat of formation. Now formation means I'm forming the compound from its elements in its most stable state. Elements in their most stable state. That means don't forget about the diatomics for things that are diatomic. So for example, let's say I wanted the heat of formation for HCl. That would be H2 gas plus Cl2 gas goes to HCl gas. Balance, I want one mole of product, one mole of HCl. So a half there and a half there. That's the how I would write the reaction for the heat of formation of HCl. If I had something like FeCl3 solid, I might write Fe solid plus 
three halves Cl2 gas gets me FeCl3 solid. Doesn't matter whether it would happen in real life or not. It's the elements in their most stable state heading to the compound. By definition, elements in their most stable state have a heat of formation of zero. The heat of formation of these guys is often found in tables. In the back of your book, in Appendix C, I believe it is, you can find lists of heats of formation. And that is written as delta HF, sub F for formation. And then they put this little circle up there. That little circle up there means standard state. Standard state. I'm going to write this down. Because remember gas laws and STP? Standard state's like that, but it's a different value. It's still pressure one atmosphere, but this time the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So you can kind of think of it as STP, standard temperature and pressure, but the temperature is different here. It's 25 degrees in thermo. So whenever you see that little circle up at the top, that means you're in the standard state. Now, heats of formation are very useful. Let's say I wanted to do the reaction C3H8 propane gas plus 5O2 gas goes to 3CO2 gas plus 4H2O liquid. And I wanted to know what the delta H of that equation is. Essentially, I'm going to do Hess's law here. I'm going to add up a whole bunch of equations until I can get the delta H for this. But I can do it kind of simpler by using the heats of formation. The equation is, now brace yourself because the equation looks a little scary. The equation, the general equation for doing this sort of thing is delta H standard for the reaction equals the summation, that's a lovely Greek letter, meaning the summation of N delta H formation of the products minus the summation N delta H zero formation of the reactants. I know that looks really scary, but all that means is I'm going to look up in a table, the heats of formation of CO2 and H2O, the products. I'm going to take the heat of formation of CO2 and multiply its coefficient, 3 in this case. That's what that little n means, 3 in this case. Then I'm going to look up the heat of formation of water, liquid, not water, gas. There's a difference. I'm going to multiply that by 4. Then I'm going to add them up. That's what that summation part means. Then I'm going to do the same thing for these guys, only oxygen zeros because it's an element in its most stable state, so that's nice. Add this, add this, subtract the two, and get the heat of reaction for this reaction. You want me to actually put numbers in? Delta H for carbon dioxide gas is negative 393.5, so that's 3 times negative 393.5 plus 4 times the heat of formation of water liquid, negative 285.83. That whole thing together minus the heat of formation of propane, which is negative 103.85. Be careful of signs here. These signs will drive you crazy. Plus 5 oxygen, but oxygen is 0. Plus a positive there. 3 times negative 393.5 plus 4 times negative 285.83 plus 103.85 gives me as an answer a delta H equaling negative 2220 kilojoules per mole. These are all in kilojoules per mole in that table. Now another kind of question they can ask you is they could give you the negative 220, 2220 kilojoules per mole 
give you, say, this guy and this guy and ask you to solve for that guy. Simple. Again, you just put your X there instead of there. Don't let that kind of question throw you. It's a kind of question they do ask rather a lot. So that brings us to the end of Chapter 5 and of Enthalpy. And next we'll be talking about those other things in that lovely formation table, delta G and delta S.